Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And in this video, I'm going to use Octave, which is an open source rewrite of MATLAB, to synthesize some wavetables to use in a synthesizer that uses wavetable synthesis. So here I'm using the term wavetable in a fairly generic sense in that we're just going to spit out a series of numbers we read from a table. There's also a more specific use of the term wavetable synthesis in something like the PPG Wave 2.3, where you can actually cycle through a series of such wavetables. And in that context, you might call the individual wavetables just waveforms, and then you would call the series of resulting waveforms the wavetable that you scan through. Yeah, it's confusing, but whatever. Okay, so how about let's let NS be the number of samples, and how about let's let that be 128. I think that's the size of the wavetables in the Profit VS by Sequential. I think it might also be the size of the wave tables in the wave PPG series, although I also saw some references saying that that's 256, so I'm not really sure. Anyway, let's go with 128. Now, you might be tempted if you wanted to generate a sawtooth to say, well, okay, well, let's have numbers like 0 to 127, and you would just plot that and say plot 0 to 127, and you might call that your wave table. So let me pull that up here. And you would say that would go up, 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 and then it'll go down quickly, and then it'll go up, 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 and then go down again, and then up, up, up. But you don't want to generate a sawtooth in a digital fashion that way. Because remember, a sawtooth, and for that matter, a square wave, and even technically a triangle wave, those are not band-limited waveforms. They have frequency content going all the way up to infinity. So you can only represent frequencies in a digital system up to half the sample rate. So any of the frequencies above that are going to alias. So this might sound interesting, but it won't actually sound like a sawtooth is supposed to. So I'm going to generate the sawtooth using additive synthesis, where we'll add up a Fourier series, where we will use a Fourier series with a limited number of terms to keep the waveform band limited. All right, so what about the number of terms? Well, let's see. If we have 128 samples, the highest frequency you could get would be having a sample that's up and a sample that's down and a sample that's up and a sample that's down. So we'll basically be limited to having 64 terms in our series. And I'm going to define an array that goes from 0 up to the number of samples. We'll call that n. And let me define another array k for our Fourier series coefficient index that's going to go from 0 up to num terms. And if you haven't seen this notation before in MATLAB, if I do something like 0 to 5 with that colon, it gives me an array going to 5. And you can also skip elements if you put in a third term here after another colon. Whoops, that's not doing what I thought it was. Oh, right, it has to go in the middle. So you put the skip in the middle. Actually, I don't need this k line. I need this to be part of a loop. So I'll say for k equals 0 to num terms. And we'll put our end here. And what are we going to do? Well, we're going to add up a function. Let me call it xx. And that's going to equal sine 2 times pi times k. And actually, we don't want to start with 0 because we don't want dc. All right, so we'll just put a 1 here, and let's see, I need to multiply that by our n here, so that's our vector of indices, and we need to divide that by ns. And let's see, we're actually adding up a bunch of sine waves, so let me write xx plus equals, and to suppress octave printing the output, let me put a semicolon here. So semicolons in Octave slash MATLAB aren't end of statement terminators in the usual way in like something like Java or C or C++ or C Sharp or whatever. If I don't have this here, it will actually output in. So let me put that there so it doesn't output in. So let me put a plot command here just for convenience. So after we compute the waveform, we'll plot it. And if I run this, it won't work because notice I'm adding 
x to our sine wave and we haven't initialized x to anything. So let me initialize x to be a vector of zeros with a number of rows that is one and a number of columns that is in s. Let's see. Okay, now I run that again and it's also complaining. Oh, right. Do you see my bug? You may have already caught it. I need to put a minus one here because we're starting the index at zero. And let's see, let me put a semicolon here so it doesn't print a bunch of zeros. And let's see, I also need the Fourier series coefficients. So let's take a k, multiply that by sine. And then to define those coefficients, it will be convenient to have a vector of k going from one to num terms. And let's see, the Fourier series coefficients for a sawtooth wave drop as one over k. Uh, actually, I need one more thing. I think I need to put a dot here. So this is an element-wise division where then the one will be expanded across all of the various components. All right. Now the k in the for loop should be locally bound, so that's a different k than the k out here. But just to avoid confusion in the code, let me change all of these to kk to make it clear that those are different things. All right, so I'm going to save, and I'm going to say wave maker. And let's see, oh, I get something that looks like a sawtooth. So it goes down this direction, and then it will suddenly climb up and wrap around and go whoop like that. And notice there are some wiggles here. And those wiggles have to do with the fact that this is not a pure sawtooth wave. It is a band-limited sawtooth. So you can use this without aliasing. Just for fun, let's see what that looks like if you only put in eight terms. Okay, so there you have a sawtooth looking thing. You've got fewer wiggles, but they're kind of broader and bigger. You don't have this big sharp transition here. What does it look like with only three terms? That could be fun to see. Uh, that's looking still sawtoothy, but not so great. What about two terms? Let's see what that looks like. Uh, that's looking more like just a basic sine wave. And if you were to put in just one term, well, of course, as a sanity check, we see a sine wave. Okay, now let me set the number of terms to be half of the number of samples in our waveform. So let me try that again. Wave maker, please make me a wave. All right, there's a wave. Now, there's a couple of ways you could use this. In a variable sample rate system, you would step through the various samples here at equal time intervals, and you would change the amount of time between each step, basically changing the frequency of the playback in order to change the frequency of the wave. In a fixed sample rate system, you would run through the table at different increments in the table with each sample. And that can work fine if you're going through the table kind of slowly. And if you're in between samples, you can use some kind of interpolation. Or if you don't have that amount of computational power, you might just use nearest neighbor interpolation. But where you can run into trouble is where you actually wind up skipping samples because then you can reintroduce aliasing issues. One solution is to take a multi-resolution approach. So in addition to a wave table with 128 elements in it, uh, let's see, I need to type figure here in order to make this come up. All right, now I have a wave table with 64 elements and only 32 harmonics, or I can drop that down further. Let's see, let's make one, ah, there we go. There's some confusion about how the windows work. So here, it's a little bit misleading because of the way it's drawing the lines. Let me make that as a stem plot, actually, to actually show the samples more explicitly. Okay, so let me type figure and let me type wave maker again. Basically, when I go to the window in front here, it's hiding the original window and I don't feel like hunting for it. So here you can more clearly see the individual samples. If you want, you could go all the way down to something like, well, here's a wavetable with only four harmonics in it because I only have eight elements here. You know, that's a thing. You could do it. And the idea is that you would have this set of wavetables with different number of elements containing different number of harmonics, and you would choose one based on your desired ultimate frequency in order to avoid aliasing. 
Okay, so that was nice. We have a way of making a sawtooth wave. What about another common waveform, namely the square waveform? Let's see, so that's going to have the same sort of descending structure, except it only has the odd harmonics. It doesn't have even harmonics. Okay, so how about let's take K and do a mod 2 operation on it. Will that do what I think? Let's see. Oh, I had to reboot the computer. So let's try that again. Okay, so it looks like I have one, zero, one third, zero, one fifth, zero. Okay, that's good. All right, so let's try that. I'm gonna make this back to plot and let's set this to 128 and we'll say wave maker. Oh, since I rebooted, I need to go into my hybrid directory where my wave maker function lives. Ah, and here we go. Look, I have something that looks like a square wave. How awesome. Now, something to remember is that this is a band-limited square wave. What you don't want to do if you want a square wave sounding thing is to just output a bunch of high values followed by a bunch of low values. Because remember, a raw square wave has infinite bandwidth. So if you just sample it directly like that, you'll get aliasing. Okay, let's see what else we can do here. Let's try a triangle wave. So a triangle wave has the same sort of odd harmonics as a square wave, except its harmonics drop according to the square of the harmonic number. Notice I haven't bothered to put in any normalization terms. You would make your waveform and then just normalize it after the fact. Okay, let's try that. So I'll say wave maker. All right, that looks like this. That doesn't look a whole lot like a triangle wave. Oh, you know what? I bet you this will sound like a triangle wave, but I think to have it shaped like a triangle wave, I have to have the signs flip on every other coefficient. And let's see, I think I know how to get that pattern. Just as a test case, let me let K go from one to eight and let me compute sine pi times K over two. So that's one, essentially zero, minus one, zero, one, zero, minus one, zero. So that will give me a flipping sign pattern on these odd coefficients. All right, so let me try that. Sine times, no, sine pi times k divided by two. All right, now let's do the wave maker call. Let's see, what does it not like here? Oh, I need a dot in front of the star here to get the element wise multiplication instead of it trying to do matrix multiplication. All right, so if I run that, actually let me type figure and then run that. All right, now that looks like a triangle wave. Now, this is gonna sound the same as that kind of sine-ish looking thing we saw earlier, because it has the same amplitude coefficients, it just has different phases. Although, of course, this will do different things if you try to add it to other waveforms, depending on what accentuates each other and what cancels. And the other thing to note is if you try to do frequency modulation driving this, you can get different effects with the different phased versions. Let's see, what other games could I play here? What if we took a square wave and did the same sort of sign flipping thing on it? So I'll add this, I guess, multiply really, this sine pi k over two. So here the signs of the harmonics are gonna flip positive, negative, positive, negative on the odd harmonics. All right, let's try that. So wave maker. Oh, I need to go into my hybrid directory because I rebooted the computer. Wave maker. Oh, now this is interesting. So if we listen to it, this is going to sound like a square wave, but it does not look like a square wave. Hmm. But it does look vaguely like a triangle wave. And remember for the triangle wave, the signs flip positive, negative, positive, negative on the odd terms, and of course the even terms on zero. So if you're wanting to morph between a triangle wave and let me call this a square-like wave in that it sounds like a square wave, but it doesn't look like a square wave. By morphing between these waveforms, you'll get a different effect than morphing between these waveforms 
where basically your third and your seventh and your eleventh harmonics will sort of like fade out and then back in as you morph between them. That's interesting. And let's see, let's play around with the sawtooth the same way. So I'm going to comment all of this stuff here out and we'll have some sort of sawtooth-like waveform. And for this, what I want to do is let me define a vector called flipper. And what I want it to do is go 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, and so on. So I could actually replace the sine pi k over 2 down here with this flipper because the evens are zeroed out anyway. And let's see, to make the flipper, let me use the rep mat function. So this takes a matrix and replicates it. So I'm going to replicate it across just one row, but a number of columns, that's going to be the number of terms divided by four. All right, so if I do something like that, let me just run that line flipper. Okay, no, uh, what am I messing up here? Oh, whoops, parenthesis. All right, let's see. Uh, let me take that out. Okay, is that doing what I want? All right, scroll up a little bit more. One, one, minus one, minus one, 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 minus one, minus one. All right, so let me take the sawtooth wave from here and let me put the flipper in the numerator. All right, so let's see what it looks like if you take terms one, two, five, six, and make those positive, but then three, four, and make them negative. All right, so let's say wave maker, or let me say figure, and then I'll say wave maker. Whoop. All right, so that looks like this. So that doesn't look much like a sawtooth, but that will give you a sawtoothy sound. Let's see, let me call that flipper four, and let me make a flipper two. And what flipper two is gonna do is it's gonna flip between one and minus one. I could also use powers of minus one to some power, but let's do it like this. All right, so what does this look like if we use flipper two? So here the sign goes positive, negative, positive, negative. Figure, wave maker. Oh, okay, so this will just give you the sawtooth wave, but it's just shifted. And of course, that's not surprising if you think about your Fourier transform properties. Okay, so that consisted of your standard analog waveforms. What about something like a rectified cosine wave? So here I'm going to need the cosine Fourier series instead of the sine Fourier series. And so we'll put a cosine here. And let's see, for the coefficients for that, let me put my k here. Actually, why do I keep doing that? Why don't I just put k equal whatever up here, All right? k equals one to num terms, doot doot. Let's see, we can get rid of this, we can get rid of this, we can get rid of this, and we can get rid of this, and we can get rid of this. Okay, I don't know why I kept doing that. All right, so a is gonna equal one over, I think it's four, k squared minus one, and notice that I need the dot version of the caret operation here, otherwise it's gonna do some weird matrix square thing, although I should say it's gonna try to do that. Anyway, this dot here means it's an element-wise square operation. All right, so let's see what that looks like. Wave maker, oh, we need a dot here. All right, so let me do figure wave maker, wave maker. All right. And it did not like something. What didn't it like? Did I not save it? Oh, I guess I didn't save it. Ah, okay. So here I have wave coming down, wave coming up like here, and then it will repeat. Let's see if I wanted it to look the other direction. How about, let me put a minus sign here. I think I forgot a minus sign. Ah, okay, if I put the minus sign there, then this looks like a rectified cosine wave. So that's another waveform. 
Okay, so we should listen to some of these waveforms. So what I'm going to do off camera is create the waveforms, assign them to some variables, and then I'll turn the camera back on and we'll listen. Oh, and before I play these, I need to normalize them. So here's my rectified cosine, and what I need to do is take that rectified cosine and divide it by the max value of the absolute value of the rectified cosine. And I need to do that for the rest of them too. Okay. Okay, I just played around with this for a bit, and this is interesting. This is the saw-like waveform. So let me actually make that a little bit longer. All right, so this is the actual sawtooth waveform. And here, to make it sound the same in terms of volume, I had to divide by 2.7, and I found this experimentally. Here's the saw-like waveform. So they definitely come out with different volumes, even though they have the same timbre. And listening back to what I just recorded, I don't know why, but when I tell Camtasia to capture the system audio, it's not actually capturing the output from Octave. So what you're hearing is the laptop speaker going through the microphone. So I boosted the gain on that a little. Um, sorry, I know that's not great. Anyway, let's press on. Okay, here's what I call the square-like waveform. So it doesn't look like a square wave, but it will sound like a square wave. And now if I want to listen to the waveform and have it be the same volume, I need to divide by around 2.5. And again, I found that experimentally. I could probably dial that in closer, but you get the idea. Here's the triangle wave. And here's the rectified cosine. Triangle wave. Rectified cosine. Here's a square wave again. Oh, that's loud. And here's a saw. There you go. One last thing that's kind of interesting. I tried making a plot where I used the Fourier series coefficients for a rectified cosine that would involve this cosine core, but I computed it using a sine core instead of a cosine core, and it gives me a function like this, which looks very different to me than this function that you get when you use the cosine core. This function here would have knots in it, whereas this function here looks smooth, although these should sound the same because their harmonics have the same amplitudes. Interesting.